Well, good morning, Grace Baptist Church. Did you come praying? Praising? I hope so. I'm trying to. I want to read from Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll begin at verse 8. Wherefore he says, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill or fulfill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come, in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, tied about with every wind of doctrine, by the sight of many coming craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, who is the head, even Christ. Notice carefully verse 16. From whom, that is, from Christ the head, from whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Just that far. I want to talk particularly about gifts that God gives to his people, to his churches. You may have noticed in the scripture we read First of all, he gave gifts unto men, and then he gave gifted men to the church. That's always the order. God gives men to various types of ministry, and uh, then he gives these gifted men to the church. You know, there was a time when Protestant theologians Many of them were teaching that the gifts all ended with the apostolic age. They're not needed for today. We don't have to think about them at all. And even some great evangelical names about that idea. The problem is they bought it without any scripture. They were never able, even when confronted publicly, they could never give any scriptures that supported their view. Because 1 Corinthians 1 7 said, God is addressing the church of Corinth. He said, So that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in other words, what Paul was saying was this that the gifts of the Spirit would be with the church until Jesus returns. So, those with the idea they were ended, had nothing to stand on. They came behind the Corinthian church in no gift, it said, waiting for the coming of Christ. Well, we have local churches, and then we have the universal church. This is a local church. The universal church, the Bible speaks about that in Hebrews 12, 22. You are come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, 
to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, that's the universal church, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. That will be when the gospel age is ended, the church is all home, that will be the universal church. And in both the local church and the universal church, God is trying to reveal His Son, Jesus, to local churches like this one here. And of course when the whole thing is ended, it will be clearly seen what God had in mind. Even now, we're told by Paul again, that God is showing principalities and powers in the heavens, the local churches, His wisdom. God is trying to show His wisdom, I say, the principalities and powers in heaven through this church and every true evangelical church. Okay, that's Ephesians 3.10, by the way. You know, we have in the Bible, Jesus is called in Isaiah 53.1, the arm of the Lord. Then uh, we have Jesus speaking about the finger, the Holy Ghost. So Christ is the arm, the Holy Ghost, we could say is the hand. People who are preaching the gospel are the feet. How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace. Thank God for that. So we have a complete Christ, or we would have if churches were aware of the fact that everybody in every church has at least one gift from God. This is not recognized. This is not practiced today. Do you know what we have in our churches? We have a Christ who only has a mouth. Or maybe we have a Christ who has a mouth and one eye. And Paul talks about this when he says, puts it this way, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the hand to the feet. But it seems that's how we're operating, and we put heavy emphasis on certain parts of the body of Christ, and other parts just as necessary are completely overlooked. And it's amazing to me how much of the New Testament deals with how often it's dealt with, yet still almost totally ignored. The apostles, Luke 9, they saw a man casting on demons, and they forbade him. Why? Well, because he didn't follow with them. That's not the whole story. The story is this. They had just tried to cast a demon out of a child as apostles, and they couldn't do it. And they were mighty embarrassed to see a total stranger casting demons out. And Christ rebuked them gently for having forbade this man and reminded them, He's with us. He's on our team. He's on our side. So the eye shouldn't say to the hand, right? Now here's the problem. Paul said, We do all things, dearly beloved, for your edification. For as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. We don't need flashy, showy gifts. We need gifts that will edify the church. Please keep this in mind. There's a phrase, the manifestation of the Spirit, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And every believer 
has some manifestation of the Spirit in his or her life. And when you become aware of what these are, I begin working at them because in the scripture we read, it talks about every joint supply attached to Christ. And so he says, the body grows. It increases as everybody in the church understands the gift they have and works at it, trusting God for grace. It's not how it is. In the many 65 years of ministry, you rarely find a church that understands this great truth. God is trying to produce in every local church His Son. So what what are they seeing? They're seeing kind of a son that isn't really there. A little bit. But not as God would have it, it seems to me, a complete Christ. Back in 1850, in the States, Methodist churches, a great state of revival, and they said more people were won to Christ. To the testimony of Christians in churches and services, that's running out of the way. They have some amazing examples of very hard, tough sinners being melted to a blob after hearing perhaps some girl give her testimony as what Jesus had done for her. We don't seem to have that today. Our testimonies, they don't really seem to do much. I mean, we can't see all that God is doing. But remember, we're to seek, to excel, to edify the building up of the church. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man for the common good or for the good of all, as different translations put it. So every Christian has some manifestation of the Spirit in his or her life. And you and I need to find out what it is. And then ask God for help. Wisdom to use it rightly. And I'll never forget it's for the edifying of the church. Not to build up your name, not in the slightest but the name of Christ. Let's begin with the gift called health. 2 Corinthians one eleven says, You also, helping together, are prayer. Oh, so the gift of health has to do a lot with prayer. That's something that all of us should and could do to help the work of God. Paul said, you also, I quote it again, you also helping together by prayer for us. He knew where his power came from. Christians walking in the Spirit and praying for his ministry. That's helps. So we can look around. I don't think it means prayer only by any means. If you see somebody struggling, Maybe the car is stuck, and you could help, stop and help. It could be an opportunity for witnessing and sharing the gospel of Christ. And oftentimes we Christians are the same as the world. We see a person in need. It could be a monitoring need or some other need. And we just walk by, forgetting the gift of health. There's something, it doesn't have to be an abiding gift or the only gift, but we should be aware of that. I, you know, I'm amazed, and I've said this before, I think, even for this program, I think of Acts 10, 38. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He went about doing what? It says doing good. We think of him going about healing the sick, raising the dead. That's not how it's put. 
He went about doing good, seeing people suffering. He healed all who were oppressed of the devil, it said. And he looked for people that were oppressed of the devil and did something about it. And we, as individual believers, should do the same thing. When Christ sent out 70, they were not apostles, they only mentioned once in the Bible. And he didn't tell them to cast out demons. He, he told them to preach the sick, or pardon me, to preach the, the kingdom of God. And they came back to serve with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through your name. We are 70 men, anointed by God, going through the country, looking for people oppressed by the devil. Now, we don't want to get tired of wearing Mary like this and see demons behind every tree. No. There's all kinds of people that need to be prayed for. Over the years, I've had several cases where the person desperately needed freedom and liberty. And I was not able to find out the root cause. So what I would do in a case like that, I would simply pray at that moment for that person to be healed by God. There's a mental healing as well as a physical healing. And we've seen over the years the very spectacular cases of people who had been in a, I don't know what you'd call into a dark chamber for maybe 30 years, set free after five minutes of prayer. I guess, you know, that could come under the gift of help too. So, he went about, I say, doing good, doing all of the press of the devil, for God was with him. So we can follow, and should follow. We hear some person struggling, can we not go to them? It doesn't matter whether they're a Christian or not. We can let them know, we're praying for you. And many times that's all that's really needed. But it has to be praying in faith. Then there's a gift of giving. He said we give with simplicity. I think he means with no fussing and no bragging. The turnover was like that. He had a business that was on the rocks. He didn't know why. And uh, the, first of all, God told him he wasn't tithing. So he started tithing. And then one Wednesday night, prayer meeting night, he was working on a plan for a new hitch for his big machine. He almost had it when God reminded him about the prayer meeting. He dropped his stencil and he walked away, went to church, stayed for prayer meeting. When he came back after the prayer meeting, he said God in a very marvelous way gave him the plan for a hitch. It was so successful that most of, us, most of those in the same kind of business, earth moving machines and so on, they never caught up to him. God did something special for him. One time he stood with a check for $50 million in his hand, and he looked at it and prayed his prayer, Dear God, what do I do with this? And God showed him, and he did it. The child was actually born in Canada, but raised as an American citizen. And of course, we've all heard of George Mueller. It's probably through his life, looking at it, the modern uh, value of English money, he probably prayed in, maybe somebody said, $60 million. But when he died, he left nothing behind for himself, for his family, it was all spent for God. God gave him much because he knew he could trust him with much. And by the way, there's a verse that says, God is able to make all grace about toward you all, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. What's the